Oh yes, it's finally here. A thin and light gaming laptop that can game at 4K, even with a bit of RTX goodness. Woo! Let's go, baby. Alright champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom, it's Windows Pro time. Right, hey, tell you there, champs. If you guys are new around here, come on, you know what to do. Sub up, join the Woo Train, and yeah, ding a ling a dong, hit that bell, and be a champ and hit that like button. So here we have the Alienware M17, the daddy. The Well, it's not the big, big daddy, because the big daddy is probably the goat of gaming laptops. I think the 17-inch, you know, the big, full-on gaming laptop, probably my goat of gaming laptops. If you haven't heard me say it before, I'll say it again, and I'll say it a hundred times again. 17-inch is the best gaming experience on a laptop. It just purely has to do with the size of the display. And this Alienware is pretty thin and light for a 17-inch. You know, it's only 2.63 kilos and 5.79 pounds. 18.5 to 23 millimeters thick it's definitely been to the gym it's trimmed down but it hasn't sacrificed that much on performance i would say still the exotic materials built like a tank i mean i do miss the zone lighting i'm not gonna lie but hey i'll put up with that for the thinness of this and this is not only great for gaming it'll be great for content creation because oh my god this 4k panel on this it's matte it is just glorious absolute quality top draw it just pops it's vivid it, it would be epic for content creation 100 percent gamut there i will measure the gamut in the review but yeah this is every bit as good as even the xps 15 display 400 nits of brightness it's just i mean i've seen a lot of good panels on laptops right but when you add that this is one of the best panels i've seen add another two inches to it minty 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 it's a gaming laptop, has everything you want, you know, three USB 3.0 ports, one of them's got the power share there, Ethernet, has a combination audio jack, it doesn't have an audio input, which makes me a little bit sad, but here's what it is. And on the back is all your connectivities to the Alienware, Graphics Amp, Thunderbolt 3, Mini Display Port, HDMI, and the power. So that's all neat at the back. Of course, you get the RGB keyboard, great keyboard, great trackpad. Has the number pad, I will say, because the trackpad's on the left a bit. It does take a bit to get... What am I talking about? This is a gaming review. We don't talk about trackpads in gaming reviews. I'll talk about that in the full review. But I cannot say enough about this monitor. And you do have like four options. You have 260 hertz options. You have one that's 300 nits, one that's 400 nits. And have a listen to this. You have a 1440p panel. It is a TM panel, but it's 120 hertz. Now, as I said before, this 4K monitor is so good, you can use it for content creation. And actually, Tobias of Surface Studio, who does After Effects tutorials and video editing tutorials, he uses an Alienware for his content creation. I'll leave a link in the description to his channel. Check it out. This would be great for content creation. And the hardest choice I would have is... Um, do I want that 1440p? And yes, 1440p. I will always take a 1440p over Full HD any day. But the hardest thing for me to choose is, would I get that high refresh 1440p or this 4K monitor? That is so hard. Too hard. Too hard for me to choose. And the good news is it can game at 4K because I was playing at medium settings and a lot of the games it can play 50, 60 frames 4K. Now, when it comes to thermals, it will reach 100 degrees on the CPU side. GPU, you know, in the 80s. CPU during the game will fluctuate 35 to over 45 watts. will even go up to 50 watts. Sometimes it does get up to 100 degrees, that CPU. But this is what Alienware do. I mean, they let the horses run free. And despite the temperatures, you're getting killer frame rates. Also with the thermals, if you peg that CPU stock, I was getting up to 100 degrees and it could maintain 3.6 gigahertz all core burst. And if I undervolted it by 150 millivolts, which is a good undervolt, I was getting temperatures in the high 70s with some cores just going over 80 and I was maintaining 3.9 all core burst, which is the maximum you can do with this CPU. So should you get the i9? The i9 will be the fastest. There won't be that much difference, but it will be the fastest and content creation 
situation, it can make a difference. However, it won't be a big deal. And I don't think there's enough thermal headroom to overclock in this because it's a thin and light. But if you absolutely must have the fastest, the i9 will be the fastest. And this thing here has an i7 8750H, an RTX 2080 Max-Q. You can also get 2060, 2070. Actually, you can get a 2060 full 2060. It's not Max-Q. And you can even get an i9. You can have a hard drive in this unit. It comes with an M.2 SSD. And you have the option, if you have the small battery, for room for a Fusion drive or a SSHD. I just had to laugh because Apple put that as their primary drive in their iMacs. You, you couldn't make it up. But if you get the big battery, which is 90 watts, you do not have room for that hard drive. And the smaller battery is 60 watts. Now, the battery life with the 60 watt battery is not that great. It's a gaming laptop and it has a 4K display. Okay, so I got, you know, doing nothing really, you know, and you even get three hours. But if you have the 90 watt battery, you'll get better battery life. And if you have the full HD display, yeah, again, you'll get even more battery life. Now, when I've done these benchmarks, 4K was tested all at medium, except for Fortnite, which I put up to high because it was just like killing it. The full HD results were done at high or the equivalent of high. So DSX Mankind divided 4K, 41 frames per second, virtually 42. At full HD, it was 60 frames per second. GTA 5 at 4K, 72 frames per second, nearly 73. At 4K, at full HD, 108 frames per second. PUBG, nearly 59 frames per second at 4K, 121 frames at full HD. Witcher 3, 48 frames at 4K. And full HD, it was 111 frames per second. Apex, 48 frames per second at 4K, 128 frames per second at full HD. Battlefield 5, well, there's a few to go through here. 4K, 57 frames per second. 4K with RTX on, 40 frames per second. 4K with RTX on, DLSS, 46 frames per second. And at full HD, 119 frames per second. Fortnite, sometimes 89 frames per second. At medium settings at 4K. If I whacked it up to high, I was getting 64 frames per second in 4K and 118 frames at full HD. Metro Exodus at 4K, 40 frames per second with RTX on, 47 frames per second at 4K with RTX and DLSS, and 126 frames per second at full HD. Overwatch, it was 194 frames per second at full HD, and at 4K, I was pushing well over 60 frames per second with Overwatch. So there you have it. Not only is this thing a thin and light gaming laptop for a 17 inch, it can play RTX games at 4K. It can play 4K gaming, no problems. Full HD, over 100 frames per second, pretty much every game at high settings. What more do you want from a gaming laptop? It doesn't get better than this. So anyway, look out for the full review. That'll be coming soon. I'm going to put the G5 through its paces with the RTX 2060. More affordable gaming laptop and that thing looks amazing too. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho. Mm -hmm.